Welcome to Making Bank. I am Josh Felber, where we uncover the mindset and the success strategies of the top 1% so you can amplify your life and your business today. I'm super excited and honored for today's guest. We've got to know each other over the last couple of years. He's the Oz behind multiple nine-figure businesses, and he is a father, a husband, a New York Times bestselling author, and he has some of the most notable clients out there, everything from Men's Health, Reebok, Adidas, On It, Vital Proteins, and just the authentic guru of marketing. I want to welcome George Bryant to Making Bank. Thanks for having me, man. Yeah, buddy. I didn't brush my teeth before this, and your wife should be mad at me because it's all sitting upstairs. Get that tooth powder out. I know. I'm like, I look at your pearly whites. I'm like, I'm going to use that white ink thing they sent me and that tooth powder. And I want the new C. I want it all. <laughs> I want it all. So I, we did send you a new, an LED white. white you did. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I've used it. Yeah. I was considering using it like, cause I fly so much like on the airplane just to see how many people I could get to, like, look at me. And like, it's like perfect field marketing. Cause you don't have to say anything. They're all like, what is that? What is that? And I'm like, this is this and this is why so yeah no it's it's great no you guys sent me one and i'm still waiting for that video testimonial from you for it Ooh, that would be a good thing to do for you <laughs> that's all right cool act. let's talk and about no, making no pressure asking me publicly on, that's, on right. Your, that's hey, why i put it out there <laughs> the guy who teaches relationship marketing i'm like i have to now <laughs> that's right all right well let's talk a little bit about making bank and what you're doing with clients and um, let's give everybody a quick i don't know three minute spiel of your background, what you have going on. Cause you have so much kind of, you were military. I know you went through a lot of stuff coming back and then you created a whole niche in the paleo market. So let's kind of start there and bring everybody up to speed. Yeah. So I'll give everybody the shortest version of my story because we don't have three days. Um, so, <laughs> Uh, I came from a pretty broken home, uh, physical abuse, emotional abuse. My parents are drug addicts, and uh, I started struggling with bulimia when I was 15 years old. So I was uh, molested when I was nine. I was raped when I was 13 by women, and it spiraled me out of control, not to mention my parents were getting divorced, and I had social services involved. And so it wasn't a really good environment. Like, I never remember having a meal with my family at a table, like in my entire life. Um, and so I basically tried to run away. I worked full time starting when I was like 14. So I joined the Marine Corps when I was 17. I forged my parents' signature and I was like, yeah, my life is hard. Uh, so let me find the hardest, most disconnected organization in the world and run there as fast as possible. So I joined the Marine Corps. Um, and that was great. I had to lose about 40 pounds to join. Um, and I was so good at everything on a graduate boot camp, combat training that I got voluntold to go on my first deployment when I was 19 to Somalia for 13 months. Um, and when I was there, I almost lost both my legs, um, had exercise induced compartment syndrome, spent 12 months in a wheelchair, 18 months of physical therapy when they said they wanted to amputate them. And I was more afraid of going home than I was not feeling my legs. And so I told them to go pound sand and I ended up tying a world record for a standing box jump, running a half Ironman, running a marathon, and then stayed in the Marine Corps, um, got married and divorced, quick chapter there. Then my father was diagnosed with metastatic brain and lung cancer, which I would say was probably the first touch point in my journey of like realizing I had to do something different, but not really knowing what that was. And so I took care of my father for six months and, uh, I put him, pulled him off life support on December 6th of 2008. And it really kind of rattled me and shook me to the core because I was still struggling with bulimia and opiate abuse from my pain and all of those things. And I ended up getting deployed to Afghanistan. And when I was there, I discovered paleo, um, through Rob Wolf. I found his book when I was sitting in Afghanistan of all places. And I realized that I needed to beat the bulimia. I needed to take care of myself and I needed to create something different. Like this is not who I wanted to be or what I wanted to do. And so I took all that kind of pain and trauma and I pushed it forward into figuring out how to CrossFit and how to eat paleo. And I'd never cooked before. So I said, well, you know, when I came home, I was going to teach myself how to cook and I was just going to post everything on Facebook. And the reason why is because I knew if I did it myself, I would cheat. Like I would go back into bleed me. I would go back into binge eating. So I was like, I'm going to post it on the internet. So I post every day. Nobody will know why I'm posting, but I'll just be posting. And uh, I started that and the Marine Corps said, hey, it's been 12 years, but we're going to medically retire, separate you because my legs, uh, PTSD, and then I had seven concussions in three years, so traumatic brain injury. And I was like, what am I going to do? And so I just kept documenting food on the internet. And, and 
um, I realized in 2011, I was like, some people asking, how can I find your recipes? How can I do this? And just to show you how I didn't know anything about business, I took every recipe I'd made and I put it in a Word document. There were 200 recipes and I called it Caveman Feast and uploaded it to ClickBank and literally was so dumb that I sold a Word document on ClickBank and we ended up grossing around, I don't know, 1.2 million in 2011. And I was like, I knew the first day it went up and I made my yearly salary in two days that something was going to be different. And so I got out of the Marine Corps and uh, I continued to teach myself how to cook. I taught myself web design, social media marketing, marketing in general. And then I had the bright idea to uh, then someone's like, you should have an app. And we're like, well, we don't know how to do that, but we'll figure it out. Ended up launching an app and hit number one in the world. It was featured by Apple as the top health of 2015. And then was like, someone's like, you should write a book. And I'm like, I don't know how to do that. I figured that out, taught myself food photography, did the whole marketing plan for that and became a 22-week New York Times bestseller, hit number four in the world. This kept going, got married to my amazing wife, uh, had my beautiful son and I had my bonus daughter. And I spent a lot of time after I got out struggling with PTSD, uh, really, really bad. I had, I'd witnessed three suicides. I'd lost about 21 Marines. And um, it broke me and I ended up back in the hospital in a psychiatric ward a couple of years ago. And that's when I realized incongruencies were slowly kind of killing me. And so I made the declaration that I was just going to tell the world everything about my life as I'm wearing a hoodie that says unapologetically authentic right now. And so I turned the food blog into a health, wellness, and recipes, but lifestyle blog. I told everybody why I was bulimic because I was sexually abused. I talked publicly about all of it. And I really started owning that story. And in that whole thing, I realized that I didn't like cooking. And I had like one of the top paleo food blogs in the world, New York Times bestselling cookbook author. And I realized that something had to be different. And so Two years ago, uh, I made the decision that I was going to keep it, but I didn't know what I was going to do. But I loved being the Oz behind the curtain. I loved sharing and teaching people what I did with marketing and Facebook and you know, building a million fans without spending a dollar and five million uniques a month with organic content in a niche that I created because I didn't know how to cook. And then um, decided to become a consultant. And uh, since then, you know, I've worked with a lot of brands that you said, like Men's Health, Women's Health, Titleist, On It, Vital Proteins, and Drink Maple, Enso Rings, Autos, Cassava Flower, a the LA Clippers, um, the CEO of Playboy, all of those people have become clients of mine, Aubrey Marcus. And um, I've now done the digital strategy behind $2 billion brands. Like we took them from like 40 million to almost a billion in revenue in 18, 18 months, or a billion in, in valuation based on revenue. Um, and then I 22 X another company in like 12 months. And so, uh, everyone said you should keep doing what you're doing. And I've been silently behind the scenes with nobody really knowing what's going on. Been like the word of mouth consultant or the speakeasy consultant to 150 or 160 brands now. And, uh, finally people are starting to pay attention and realize that I can't hide in the dark anymore. And that brings us to here. And I'm on making bank with my buddy, Josh. And, you know, and that's what we're helping you bring bring more light on you and what you're doing. Yeah, man. I just, you know, the whole thing for me, and I think it was done perfectly. You know, like, you knew I was an influencer for eight years by myself. So I came from that side. So no container of a business background or degrees. I barely made it through high school. So I, I learned everything in like the bare minimum way possible to add value and build relationships. And then when I swapped onto the other side of the game, I understood it better than any of the companies ever could because I've been an influencer and on the other side. And so it's this really unique perspective. And, you know, my whole thing is like, I don't really want to have an ego or have all the spotlight. Like I want to impact a billion lives and in inspire and empower people to create like generational legacy and wealth. And you only do that by giving a crap about people. And so now it's the time where I've been doing it for, you know, two years silently. And I have all the stuff under my belt and I've learned all these lessons and spent hundreds of millions of dollars on advertising. And I'm like, now's the time where in like my hero's journey, like I conquered the dragon and the most important part is where you teach everybody kind of what you know. And that's kind of where I am right now. That's awesome. Uh, you know, and we, I know we could dive into a whole huge plethora of things on your, on your backstory and all that. Um, but we don't want a four hour show. Yeah. Yeah. We'll reserve, we'll reserve that for the follow up interview. Um, Today, let's. What I want to do is really extract because I know you and I have talked, and you talk about authentic marketing, and you're doing. You, from my understanding, what it's looked like, you're doing things different than what everybody else seems. What kind of is the norm? I guess. Yeah, yeah, very against the against the the fringe kind of thing with people. Yeah, and, and so I guess I mean for me, it's like okay, well, what is he doing? How is he doing it? 
I obviously it's attracting all these big brands to come work with you and everything else. And some really s sweet things I know that we've talked about with the way you're positioning yourself and partnerships and everything else. So what are you doing? I guess let's start off, you know, differently. And I guess what is the authentic marketing? Totally. Yeah. So, you know, you can call it transformational marketing is the name I've given it. My whole thing, like the title of my keynote is relationships beat algorithms. Right. And so, you know, we live in this world where no matter what, we're always selling something, we're always marketing something and marketing, in my opinion, kind of goes in cycles. And, you know, we've been spoiled for the last eight years or so. If you've been playing on the internet, right, where there were no algorithms and everything was there and you could build millions of fans for free and now everybody's in the game of complaining that they have to pay to reach these people and all these things now. Uh, but what they're missing is that those are still all very surfacey kind of things. And my whole job is to play in the game of marketing where relationships beat algorithms, where we have relationships. And, and the definition of marketing for me is two-way long-term value-based relationships. Most important part being two-way, not dictatorships or I'm going to post and not respond to you. And that builds a foundation that's not predicated on a transaction and it builds a foundational relationship that is not predicated on a strategy or tactic or Facebook, Instagram, or email. It builds one that somebody has a social trigger or brand awareness around your brand, whether they consume you on social media or on email. And if any of those things go away tomorrow, they will still come find you. And so underneath all of it, um, when I look at this, you know, I have a lot of people like, Hey, I have a marketing problem. Hey, I have a marketing problem. And I'm like, you think you do. Everybody thinks they have a marketing problem, but the truth is, is that nobody has a marketing problem. Everybody has a relationship problem with either themselves, their team, or their customers and formed in that order. And so when you can really think through, and like I call it like every conceivable scenario, but when you can think one step further than what your competition is, or you look at your marketing and realize that your marketing is not supposed to be about you and everybody makes it about you. Your marketing is supposed to be about your customer. And I see all this stuff about, look at how great we are. Look at all these feature benefits. Look how pretty it is. Look at the product. I'm like, great. Uh, look how they don't give a crap because that's not what lands for them. And so the first test that I do with everybody is, uh, I call it the grandmother test. And this is great for everybody who has a business online, in person, in a store and ask yourself, would I be okay if my 96 year old grandmother went through my funnel? went through my customer journey, consumed my products. And it's like, okay, so think about the demographic. It's like not really tech, very long form kind of written stuff need to be guided. And I'm like, so if somebody buys your tooth powder and my grandmother buys it, is she going to feel good when she completes that transaction or is she going to feel bad? Is there going to be space for resentment or guilt or is there going to be excitement and ammunition to share the brand? And then once it comes, you know, what are you doing between the six days between buying and it getting to your door? Are you setting your expectation? Are you creating ownership before they get there? And then once they have it, like, does she know how to use it? Does she feel connected to the brand? Does she feel like she knows how to get support kind of thing? And, and I'm known for saying this and everyone's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, I wouldn't. I'm like, then why is it okay for mine to go through your funnel? And it's this really, really good test because we've been spoiled with all of this pay for play with like, you know, back in the day, four years ago, you used to be able to put a dollar in Facebook and get 15 out with no effort. Just like you could go 18 to 90 and you'd still make money because nobody was doing it. And now the cycle I'm seeing is that the discernment that's happening with people because of all the noise and competition is that they're truly only consuming or building relationships with brands that have a, a deeper relationship outside of a transaction. And I think what's happening and it's going to happen this year and next year with all the video consumption and ads and social media is that we're going back to like it was in the 50s where when somebody walked through the front door, you had to know their name, their families and what their butcher order was, whether they were ordering meat that day or not, because you had a relationship that wasn't predicated on a transaction. And so – that's a very high level way of thinking about it. But what we do is like I come in and I do a current state analysis and we look at everything from Facebook to Instagram to email to funnels to customer journeys, UI, UX, and we start identifying what the bucket looks like. And then we start figuring out where all the leaks are in the bucket. And then once you can start plugging those leaks in the bucket and having transactions turn into transformations, right? So marketing is transactional, relationship building is transformational. You get to change the game. And I think a lot of the times people forget that there's human beings on the other side because you and I have seen this for years, right? It's like, okay, here's the deal. If you spend a million bucks and you make a million and one, you keep going because now you're at least self-liquidating profiting on the front end, right? And so 
if you do that with 100,000 customers and you only need to find 100,000 more, and I'm like, cool, if you do that with 100,000 customers and at the percentages you're talking about, 2% of them say yes, that means if I put 100,000 people in the stadium and I said, how many of you like me, only 2,000 hands go up and the other 98,000 say no. And what people forget about is that we get people to consume our products and consume our stuff on digital, but they have a life outside of that. And 82% of marketing is still done via word of mouth. And the average person gives five to 10 brand recommendations or non-recommendations in a 60 second conversation. So think about like when we get together, when you and I started talking before this interview, you told me about your new daylight glasses. I told you about my favorite ones. I told you about a supplement that I liked, another company that was doing it, right? And a lot of it's not even noticed. And then you get the brand subconscious interactions. Like I have a Starbucks cup that says something about me and you notice it. You have a certain microphone stand and you have a high LPR 40, which gives me justification that the one I have next to me was a good choice. And so all of these things are there, but those, those things only happen when you can give somebody ammunition to be a part of that conversation. And so if every transaction that somebody has with you when they don't buy is a no, then the only ammunition they have is resent, anger, frustration, sadness. But if you turn those no's into yeses, regardless of the credit card, all of a sudden they're like, I didn't even buy from this guy and he keeps giving me stuff. I didn't buy this tooth powder. And they literally sent me a how to brush your teeth naturally at home making your own toothpaste kit. And that seems so counterintuitive, but not when she tells her nine girlfriends at their stroller workout on a Saturday morning why her teeth are so white because she's been making her own tooth powder because Primal Life Organics helped her whether she bought the product or not. And so that is probably the easiest way for me to explain kind of what I look at like that. And so what I came up with is seven guiding principles of what I consider, you know, transformational marketing that, and I use principles because I see all too often, and you see this in our world, you and I both go to the same events, know the same people. It's like, this is the tactic right now. This is the strategy right now. This is what you need to be doing right now. And we have to remember that all of those are reactive and all they're doing is temporarily band-aiding a symptom rather than getting to the core disease on what it is there or, or even the core anything. And so for me, principles are things like no matter what the landscape looks like right now, no matter what Facebook, Instagram, you know, whatever platform you don't even know exists, that Mighty Networks is making a come up right now, um, that we build underneath it the most solid foundation so then we can stack as many tools as strategies or tactics on. And then even when they don't work or the platform goes away or Snapchat tanks, that there's still a foundation that can be scalable when the next one comes along because the customers are still there. So I'm going to have to watch that again because I think that's the best synthesis I've ever given of <laughs> any, anything that I do. <laughs> no, that's awesome. And so, <clears throat> so you're saying, okay, you know, we have, um, try to clarify here, the people obviously that are coming and those are the people that are buying now, but then we have the other 98% that are not buying and then what are, how are we handling and continuing to build that relationship with totally. Like ta tangible one, right? And we all have this. You have a ton of e-commerce people listen to this. Um, first, best one ever. And this one gets me riled up and swearing all the time. A cart abandonment emails. When was the last time that you actually added something to your cart and forgot about it? Never. We don't ever forget. We get there and we are met with objections. We're like, oh, I don't know if this is a good idea. I can't justify this purchase. Do I really, really need this, right? But then 28 minutes later, we send an email. It's like, hey, you forgot something. I'm like, I didn't freaking forget anything. I left because you didn't help solve my problem or overcome my objections. And so we have this entire relationship where – Let's say it took five touch points to get this person to add tooth powder to their car. They saw a video of Trina. They saw a retargeting ad and we're like, okay, in the game of reciprocity, your bank account is already negative. Like you're overdrawn because it was like, give a little bit, but like now come click through, come add to your car, come here. And like your bank account's depleted. And then if they don't buy, we immediately ask them to basically sleep with us again on the first date. It's like, hey, you didn't buy, but you forget. So here's one more time. Or like, let me incentivize you and give you a discount and devalue my brand while I'm literally trying to just close a deal. And then we even tack retargeting on top of it and we follow them around Facebook rather than getting to what's underneath, like why they didn't buy. And so if you convert, let's say you're a really good brand, you convert 3% of your cold traffic and then you run card abandons retargeting, you might recover too, might recover too. And then the 95 that were only one 
point away now have three or four other reasons not to like you because you literally just hounded and hounded and hounded them. And so I'll give everybody exactly what I did. We made a card abandonment gift and we took the ability to buy away from people. And so they came and they came to the cart and they added and for whatever reason was there, not like a repurposed piece of content. We make an original gift for every single product we have. And everybody's now going to know what I do since I'm telling everybody, go for it, go forth and do great things. And so like for a tooth powder for me, and this is just an easy example because of Trina, um, you know, if they don't buy the tooth powder, then I can make up because of my avatar roughly why they're not buying it, whether it's a barrier of entry, they've never used a powdered toothpaste before, they don't believe that it works, they'll still have stinky breath, and blah, 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 blah. And so normally I'll make a gift around that. And so in your case, I might make a video with an ebook or a guide on how to make your own tooth powder or your own healthy toothpaste at home with a, a checklist or some sort of accountability to really like put a habit into practice. And so like 30 minutes later where everyone's like, hey, you forgot something, I'm like, I'm not going to insult your intelligence. And then the email's like, don't worry, I'm not like every other brand out there. I know you didn't forget. You left because I failed to meet the mark. And of everything that exists on the planet right now, there's one resource that I can never give back to you, and that's time. And I understand that you've given me probably at least 10 minutes of your time watching my videos, consuming my content, and I feel like I owe you. And so I made this gift for you, and I'm not here to tell you to buy my tooth powder, but I know you're interested in dental health and what you have, and my job is to help a billion people, and I want you to do that with this. And so here's the guide, here's the video, and I'm going to follow up with you tomorrow to see if you have any questions. So go forth and do great things. And that's email one. Email two, it's like, you know, um, did you do this yet? And I open the email. I'm like, all right. So did you watch the video or the, the ebook? I want to make sure you consume it at three minutes and 10 seconds in the video. If you have no other time, it's pure gold. Just that one thing that you do with your dental health every single day will have a resounding difference on like what you end up looking like, you know, down the road. And so I want you to use it. And of course, if you have any questions, if you need anything, here's our Facebook group or just simply hit reply to this email and we'll respond. And then, you know, day three, I'm like, my subject line is I'm ethically bribing you. And I open the email and I'm like, so I'm going to be really transparent. I only gave you that gift because I do want to ask you something and I'm not going to ask you to buy, but I'm going to ask for your opinion because the truth is, is that you're my ideal client and I've spent a lot of time making products and formulating them so I can help you and help other people like you. And there was something missing from you to buy our product. And I don't want you to buy it, but I just want to know what it was. So if you could just write back to this email with five words, like experience stuck, the website wasn't there, I don't understand the product, I don't know what benefits it has, and hit reply, I would just love that. And by the way, we get like 30, 40% of responses. And a lot of them are like, I do want this, but I can't find a link to buy again. Can you send it back to me? Right? Because you're taking the forced transaction out of it. It goes from you need to you get right it's a choice rather than like boom 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 and this is where i do copywriting i literally take every single response and i put them in an air table document and those questions become the headlines for all of my ads the copy for all of my emails the copy on my sales pages the faqs because that's the actual language that our ideal customer is using with the actual pain points that they're experiencing and then I thank them. And then on the fourth email, I'm like, I'm kind of stupid or I'm an idiot or I can't believe I didn't think about that. And I'm like, I never guessed I would get as many responses as I got yesterday. And given what you've sent, we really failed to meet the mark to overcome your objections and help identify you. And so these are all of the things that were asked yesterday and I just want to dispel them. So, you know, the FAQ that we didn't have, question one, will this work for this? Question two, how long do I have to use it to see results? And we're like, we're, we're sorry we didn't include it. We're gonna jump it on the page and you have it. And this is the last you're gonna hear about a, the tooth powder. And so uh, if you wanna know anything more, just hit reply. If not, here's a link to our Facebook group. And starting tomorrow, you're gonna start receiving our daily oral hygiene care for you to put into practice at home and then that closes the loop and that alone and i can't share the company but that alone on a consumable supplement recovered like 32 percent of people that abandoned the cart and we did not even give them a link in the email to buy the product they either replied and asked or they went and found it again because we attributed the pixel all the way through they found it again and it attributed the sale about five days later and the only thing, honestly, is that if you can outcare your competition by one step, by one click, by one conversation, you already have won the game 
because that last person's interaction, instead of it being a no, became a yes or at least a neutral. So when someone's like, hey, have you heard of you know making bank? They're like, yeah, that guy just keeps selling me. They're like, yeah, totally. Like I kind of was a little frustrated, but then like he just kept giving to me. And so I don't know if I can recommend it, but like I kind of got to be open about it. Right. And so like at worst, it's neutral because you, you can't give to people and have them be upset. Plus, you're saving yourself a lot of money when it comes to retargeting. You're allowing them to self-identify themselves. If you want to get really, 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 really ninja with it, if like on that gift, you end up making a video and you put it on its own landing page, pixel the page and then retarget them, asking them in the ad about the consumption of that video and what they need next. And then you're allowing people to pre-qualify themselves and prospect themselves. So you're not wasting money on, you know, cold acquisition because they're doing it for you. So that's, that's one tangible example of the thousand that I do in different ways to do it that, um, that actually works and no matter what can win with people because it, there's no way to lose. No one can be mad at you. Nobody can be like, Oh, you tried to take advantage of me. And it's just pure relationships. And the best example I can give you is, could you imagine if you walked into a grocery store and two things happened. You added a dozen eggs to your cart, and then you added, let's say, a container of orange juice. And when you got up to the register, you decided you didn't want the orange juice, so you put it back, and then you bought the eggs. And then on the way out the door, after you bought, the manager said, oh, wait, hold on. Do you want to double the amount of eggs you have for half the price? And you're like, no. And then you walk again. They're like, all right, do you want to triple it for 10% off and even more? So you'll have 36 dozen eggs. And you're like, no. And then he's like, oh, wait, 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 but you put the orange juice back. Are you sure you don't want the orange juice? You're like, no. Like, can you imagine if we applied the principles of digital marketing to an in-person experience just walking out of a grocery store or walking out of Starbucks? We would literally have not enough room in jail for all the assaults that occurred in this country. And so I think about it that way because – where people miss the mark is that they think digital digital is a different experience. Digital is an extension of a physical experience. We're just creating an ecosystem like walking into a restaurant or walking into a grocery store or walking into a mom and shop butcher shop on the internet. And the principles have to be the same. People want to be seen, heard, and right. They want to be acknowledged. They want to feel safe. They want to have everything there to make their choice. And then that's when they make a choice and associate that with the brand, whether they buy the product or not. Because we've all walked into grocery stores. We've walked into Toomey. We've walked into Apple. We've window shopped. We've walked out. Apple doesn't stop you at the door and like, wait, you didn't buy an iPhone today. Wait, you didn't buy a watch today. Wait, you didn't buy it. And so you, in my opinion, you have to think about that because the days of like really quick transactions, heavy paid media, PPC stuff, it's gone because people are so in tune to what's happening now. And I watched this on the airplane the other day. I was flying home from Amsterdam and there was a guy sitting next to me and we'd already been talking about marketing and he worked for a really big company that hired me. And I just noticed he was on Facebook and I watched him and I started my timer on my phone and I counted for 60 seconds and I counted how many ads that he scrolled through. And I stopped my timer and I said, hey man, I was like, Mark, he's like, yeah, I'm like, can I ask you a question? He's like, yeah, I'm like, you've been on Facebook, right? He's like, yeah, I'm like, I timed you for 60 seconds. Can you tell me and guess how many ads you saw? And he's like, yeah, I only saw one. It was a basketball one. I'm like, okay. I was like, you passed 17. And he's like, I didn't see any of them. And I was like, I know he plays basketball. He saw the basketball ad. He saw the content related to the relationship that was there. And it wasn't an ad. It was a video on like a how to. And it's like, that's all the data I need. Like that alone is so valuable to think about because there's so much noise and competition that everybody's focusing on that first transaction. They're focusing on that one night stand, but that never creates a sustainable long-term relationship. And when everybody focuses on the front, if you can win on the front, you win them for life and it becomes a hockey stick because those people stay in consumption of the brand, whether they buy your product or not. It's why like my wife can buy Lululemon, not buy it for two years, but still wear it all the time and still tell all of her friends how much she loves the hoodies and the pants and the shorts. And it's why we can go have an amazing meal at a restaurant. And regardless of if we go eat there again in the next three months, six months or nine months, every time a friend asks for a recommendation, it's the first restaurant that comes out of our mouth. They've given us the ammunition in that gun to share it with our friends. So we look more credible. We look funny. We add value and they associate that success with us, but they're not requiring that 
we go eat in the restaurant every single day or we buy 18 more dishes or we have to have seven desserts as upsells before we leave the restaurant. And so, yeah, no, that's, that's a tangible as about as real as I can give it without like looking at an individual business and figuring out where those holes are. No, that's awesome. Uh, and I hope everybody was taking notes here because I mean, what you just shared was like amazing goal. I mean, that's like millions of dollars of <laughs> Actually, yeah, like hundreds that we've seen <laughs> because it, it works. Right. Um, no, that's super awesome. Um, I know actually we're probably out of time, but we'll kind of go for a few more minutes here. Um, I know you said you mentioned you had kind of like seven principles that you kind of. Oh, yeah, yeah I, yeah, I can share those. Yeah. So these are basically what I was thinking through is like, what are the things that can stand the test of time that if a business does even a few of them? that there's no way they can lose. And that's kind of where I came up with this list. So uh, principle number one, this is a mind blowing principle, uh, listen to what the customer wants. And what I see happening a lot of times is we have a lot of companies and people that buy data, they spend a hundred grand on market research to figure out what product to launch without just asking. And honestly, there's so much feedback that exists on hashtags, on your social media, on Amazon listings, on your FAQs and your emails that you need to be paying attention to what people are saying and not saying from social media comments, email responses, noticing the social trends and also realizing like if you create content and you post it and you're used to posting every day and there's a thousand likes and a hundred comments. And then when you post this one piece of content, there's only 93 likes and six comments over and over. You need to listen to what they're not saying as well because it's feedback. And so that's number one. Number two is everything we do has to be learning or serving. So don't try to make people click, make them care. But if you are working on social media, if you're working in the back end of the business, if you're doing customer research or user experience or you know customer journeys, ask yourself, is like what I'm about to do, post, share, or ask, helping me learn about my client, my customer, or my business Yes or no. And if it's a no, is it helping me serve that client, person, or business based on what I know in the learning category? And if both of those are no, you're going to waste your time, energy, and money doing something that will have absolutely no effect on the business. None whatsoever. Uh, principle number three is focus on building long-term relationships, not one-night stands. And so going from transaction to transformation, eliminating the ability to like make every single thing an ask, like in Gary's words, like don't write hook over and over and over again. Um, number four is two way conversations, not one way lectures. And so this is probably one of the biggest mistakes that I still keep seeing. So you go to social media, you see this page, you see, uh, you, you know, they have a hundred thousand followers and they do these posts and every day they get 30, 40 comments and they don't respond once you do realize that you have to train your customers on how to be your customers and you have to train your fans on how to be your fans. And so if I have somebody that comes to me and they have a, an, oral, an oral hygiene question and they go on your social media and ask a question, then they go to like Quip Toothbrush and ask a question, whichever brand responds first wins that customer for life, guaranteed. Because when somebody asks a question and they don't get a response, we've trained them that they're not important enough to respond to, they will never ask again. And the one that does, they will remember and they will keep. And so the most simple thing that you can do is just let people know that they're seen and heard. And you know, we have hundreds of thousands of fans. We still respond to all the DMs and 98% of the comments. We don't respond to emojis because they don't really, I don't know what their emoji means and I don't want to make inferences there. Um, so Two-way conversations, not one-way lectures. So you need to play that long game for people because those are all the touch points that it takes in order for them to make a purchasing or sharing decision. And just to wrap that up in that principle, it cost me $5 million to test this with a company. And we figured out that it took between 15 and 24 touch points to convert a cold customer into a $60 product. 15 to 24. And so I'm going to be the Robin Hood of marketing right now. You don't need to spend that money, but you need to think through that journey and touch points by building two-way relationships. Because when somebody seems heard, sees if they they feel heard, they feel seen, and they feel right, 
they associate that with you and they feel better when they consume your brand, they will stick around. Um, so principle number five is no one left behind. Everyone comes home or you die trying. And so for me, this is that every customer or prospective customer feels like they matter in every step of the journey, whether they buy or not. So eliminating that false scarcity, like you're bad and wrong, like I'm taking you off my email list because you don't open, like give people the choice, but don't, don't create negative ammunition around your brand. And so everybody comes home or die trying means that I believe when you launch a company, you have a moral obligation to stand in the biggest possibility. And no matter what, you're going to capture the attention of people that don't buy or that are not a good fit from you. But that doesn't mean that when they come to you in, in this case with like a sucking chest wound that you kick them out the door and tell them to go somebody else. You administer first aid and you help that person and you approve upon the silence, whether they're going to buy from you or not. And that's everybody comes home or you die trying. So that principle for me obviously comes from my military days and combat deployment days. Um, principle number six is if it can be personal, it must be. And that means scaling the quote unquote unscalable. But the truth is that you only scale one on one because every single thing is a customer. It's one transaction and one relationship. And so, you know, you have to make sure that personalization happens with the person, but also the psychology of where they are. And so I see it all the time post on Instagram and then you auto post to Facebook. No, two different ecosystems, two different consumption methods, two different avatars. And quite frankly, two different versions of psychology running why they're consuming that content. You can use the same image, but please take seven seconds to write a caption for Instagram and a separate one for Facebook that's applicable to where your customers are so it feels personal and it relates to what they're doing. Every social platform, even within them, Instagram, you have Instagram stories, Instagram feed, paid Instagram, Instagram live. That's four different universes that just exist in one ecosystem and you have to treat them differently. And so then the last and the final, and I would say the most important principle for me is that everyone matters whether they give you their credit card or not. And that's eliminating all of the ideas that you feel bad and wrong or like you're less than if you don't buy. And so my thesis for this, my theory is that our job should constantly be turning every single no into a yes. And so a no being, hey, I didn't buy, that's a no because there was an ask that didn't happen, but don't end on that transaction. Take that no and send them a gift, build a relationship, ask a question, give them a piece of content, give them a group, give them more value, help them consume something different so you can at least get your customer or future customer or maybe never customer back to neutral so you've at least improved upon that transaction and given them something more than what they came with because that is what builds your business because everybody focuses so much on like pay and conversion and CPA and return on ad spend and ACOS and Amazon, all that stuff, right? I'm like, great. You do realize that you're playing small because that person spends two hours a day online and spends the other 17 hours in conversation with human beings. So when you can create a physical ownership of a digital brand or a digital experience, you give them the ammunition to go talk about your brand. And it becomes a measurable scalability because you can't even attribute all those conversations. But all of a sudden, the, the wave just keeps getting bigger and bigger and the tide just keeps rising. So those are, those are the seven principles that I've actually never fully shared publicly before. <laughs> Well, there you go. That's awesome. <laughs> it's a it's a first over here on Making Bank. Yeah, we got a lot of firsts happening today. <laughs> well, cool, dude. I, that's amazing content. And I mean, like I said earlier, I hope people are taking notes, rewinding this, you know, uh, play it again, listen to it again, watch it again. I mean, what George is sharing is just pure gold for your business. It's going to help move you and help help you become better connected to your potential customers as well as providing them with significant value, like you said, to go out to communicate to others and everything, whether they become your customer or not. So rewind, watch it again. And George, tell everybody where the best place to connect with you at, because I know you said you like to talk, talk to and directly respond to everybody. So I do. I do. So I, <laughs> I love talking about marketing and sharing all of this. And so in the spirit of me being congruent, I created a free Facebook group. It's called, um, marketing with George Bryant. And I run the group myself. Everybody gets to come in and I share basically all of this in depth. And I do posts where I ask for your questions and I answer every single one of your questions in that group. And I'll tell you where to go, how to consume it. So 
that is the best place to contact me. And if you are not on Facebook and let's just say you're an Instagram person, um, if you send me a DM on Instagram, I will respond to every single one of them as well. And so my Instagram is civilized caveman. So the Facebook group is, uh, marketing with George Bryant.com and not marketing with George Bryant.com marketing with George Bryant. I'm thinking about buying a domain right now just to redirect it. I don't know. What about George Bryant FB.com or what should I, what should I name it? Cause I'll make one right now. <laughs> well, yeah, marketing with George Bryant. Oh yeah, I guess I could do that. <laughs> Cause I was trying to make it like, I was trying to make it easy. So I was like, is GBFB available? Like G GBFB yeah. is taken, <laughs> but yeah, on, on, on Facebook, it's, it's the only one. I'm the only one running a marketing with George Bryant group. So just search marketing with George Bryant. And I'm sure you can put a link in the video. Uh, and then that'll be the best way to do it. Cool. Or find you a civilized caveman. Civilized Caveman on Instagram. Yep, it's the best one. They're both mine. I run them both, and I will get back to all of you. Awesome. Well, dude, it was an honor to have you on the show finally because I know we've talked about it for over a year-ish <laughs> or two, maybe now. <laughs> but it was super cool to have you on. Um, you know, Awesome with everything that's been happening for you and growth and just you know being able to uh, help so many amazing brands and everything out there. So thank you for coming on Making Bank and definitely want to have you back on again soon. So Of course, man. Let me know. Thank you so much for having me and for everybody listening. Thank you for giving me your time since you got to choose to spend it with me. I appreciate it. I am Josh Felber. You are watching Making Bank. Get out. Be extraordinary.